Go ahead. Can you kind of fill us in on some of the guys who've been missing practices due to injuries? Anything uh, serious on any of those fronts? Um, no real serious ones. Um, you know, Burford actually is probably the most. He can miss a couple of weeks, a few weeks possibly. You know, he has a hand issue. We're still kind of making a decision on here over the next couple of days. Broken hand? Uh, yes. Uh, he, he missed some time in the spring too. Yeah. Burford just out there participating in what he's doing. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're just trying to decide whether to get surgery on it or not. You know, it's you know, I know how you guys are with timetables, but I'm guessing around three weeks. How so. has Dominic Pooney done in his opportunity to get some of those first team reps? He's done a real good job. You know, we haven't had pads on yet, which is always a challenge for guys, especially in protection. But um, you know, he's stepped in there, got more reps, and I've been, been excited about him. We've seen uh, Nick Zakel get a lot more featured time at center as well. Has he just larger picture over the, the, the couple of years? Has he made a lot of progress? Uh, yeah, he is. And they're, they're all battling for those inside spots. And um, any time, you know, especially when you lose guys in there, you're not having Burford, Feliciano's missed a little bit of time. Um, you got to have guys. And Brendel, we give some time off. He's not out there every single day. Um, so guys got to be able to back up. They got to be able to do center. They got to be able to do guard. And, um, the other, they'll know all three. How is, uh, how is Bosa looking? And then how do you like the uh, depth at defensive end? Um, and he's looked look like Nick, so that's pretty good. Um, and the depth's been great. I've been real excited about it so far. Um, seems like we got great depth. Seems like we're improving. Um, but it's also four days in, too. And excited to get pads on on Monday. Like, is pads basically the start point? To yeah, that? pretty much. I mean, you, you try not to make big judgments as a coach until the pads get on, because Things get a lot realer when that happens. What have you seen from Leonard Floyd since he's been in the building? Um, that he seems just like the guy I've always gone against. Um, same type of body, same type of athlete. I'm um, getting to know as a person. He's um, like advertised. I mean, the guy loves football. Um, he's got a hell of a motor. Uh, real fun to be around. How has Beal progressed from year one to year two? Is he is he bulked up a little bit or? What? Yeah, I think he has a little bit. Um, you know, I think he made some big steps towards the end of last year and. He's, he's helped us out in special teams. He's trying to be a part of our group and get in that rotation as a rusher and get better in the run game. But I've been excited about Robert. He had a good off season. He's been good in these four days, and we'll see how he goes. How was the day just a day off for Hargrave? Or uh, yes, yeah, planned day off. Uh, Logan Thomas, um, I think year three or four in the NFL, he went from quarterback to tight end. He never played tight end ever. At least how impressive is it? to make that pretty rare transition in the NFL. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's real impressive. I, mean, I remember studying him as a quarterback coming out, and he was one of the better throwers, I thought, in the draft. So um, you know, he was a, you know, I never got to work with him or anything, but I just knew he was a real talented quarterback, and he was a good runner, um, had a good arm, and um, then someone at some time moved him to tight end, and he's got the perfect body to play that, too, and he's had a hell of a career. So felt real fortunate for us to get him here in camp. And um, it's different offense for him, so he's, he's got a lot on his plate getting in here late in OTAs and stuff, but he's picking it up, and I think he'll get better and better each day. Dobbs had a nice day today. Um, where is he in kind of knowing the offense and just his uh, kind of uh, learning your system? Um, I mean, I think he knows it mentally. It's just it's just about going through the reps and the situations and getting a feel for the rhythm of it, especially with this D-line in front of him on every play. Um, that's always a challenge of it. You want to get a feel of the offense and everything, but don't expect people to be blocking very well with the second and third group, and especially when you don't have pads on. So that's always the biggest challenge for quarterbacks in training camp, especially when you're going with twos or threes. Um, but, I th but I think Dobbs done a hell of a job for us so far. How we've seen uh, Willis make some nice plays. How is he progressing in year two? Um, I've been excited with him. I mean, it's still only four days in, but um, showed a couple clips yesterday of him doing a hell of a job in the run game. I mean, you guys noticed it in the past game and see it the same way, and hopefully he'll keep taking steps forward. Chris Furster was talking about one-on-ones and, and how sometimes it's frustrating because we'll write stuff about who's winning them and guys are trying to work on things. I know, I know it's different offensive line versus receivers, but what do you make of, of one-on-ones when those start next week? Um, it's good work for people. I mean, but it's not a, you know, one-on-ones are hard for everybody. You know, it doesn't feel quite the same when it's 11 on 11 out there. Um, when you're just in a one-on-one -on -one battle, the, the guy's going to eventually win. Um, and very rarely does someone just get stoned and completely punked in a one-on-one -on -one drill. So it always looks like you eventually win, but it's, it's really good work for those guys. I mean, it's, 
the, the reps they need with their hands, the speed of getting off. It's tough when you don't have pads on because it's a little, when there's not a threat of a bull rush and things like that, it, or if they are bull rushing and you don't have pads, it makes it a lot tougher. So again, I get, I take it more, we won't do that until we have pads. Um, that's one of my favorite things about Monday. We get pads on and we get to watch those guys and sometimes in team drills and stuff and you know, someone can have a bunch of catches or things like that, or they can get to the quarterback because of some pressures and stuff. And you don't know if it's zone, you don't know what the situation is, but when it's one-on-one, -on -one, you can't hide and you get to really evaluate. It seems like in the past, you guys have had like one, if you have a young safety coming up, you always have kind of a veteran guy who's, who's been around and has a lot of experience. How do you feel about the safety position as it is right now with Jair and either Hufanga or Odom or whomever, would you guys look into potentially adding a veteran guy later? I mean, I feel great about our safeties right now. I mean, it'll be real exciting to get Huff back here, um, and I think in a week or two. Um, but I think him not being in there, I mean, Gio is really taking advantage of his reps. I think he's playing as good as he's played at the safety level. Um, you know, Jair just getting that experience last year, it's helped him out so much. We've got a number of young guys in here which are competing hard, and um, we do have some older vets here um, with a lot of knowledge who have played some football, guys like Eric Harris and stuff like that. So we got a good group. I don't rule out anything as it goes. You never know how it'll play out, but I feel good about our group, what we got right now. Does Pearsall have a chance for Monday? Uh, yes, he does. It's not guaranteed, but uh, he has a chance. A week or two for Huff to return to practice? Um, I think he's going to get checked up when we go down um, to L.A. and scrimmage. And I think down there is where we kind of will, we're expecting around that time.